Hey everyone, so at the beginning of all the quarantining and staying at home, kicking into effect, Plantastic Greenheart, aka Reb, just not Becky, as we all know and love, um, she came up with some questions for a quarantine planty tag that are a lot of fun. Most of the videos were posted quite a bit ago, <laughs> so I'm a little late to the curve. I'm trying to work on that. But honestly, the questions are just too funny to pass up. So. I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna, I have her video here, so I'm just gonna let her read the questions. Okay, number one. If you ran out of food and had to start making salads out of your plants, which would be your first to eat and for which would you starve? So, for this one, a lot of other people's videos were talking about the plants that they liked the least for this question. Basically, they're easy to give up because you don't like them, so might as well eat them and get rid of them. But us big boys, we need to eat. So I'm gonna actually focus on the ones that are edible. Also remember, a lot of houseplants are toxic, so be careful which ones you're picking to eat. So with this question, I definitely would have to go with my prickly pear opuntia cactus, the round ones that have pads. I actually used to have a huge one out front. Actually, technically the side, but we go through the garage so it's kind of the front for us but it was just overtaking and they took it out my family removed it years ago to my sadness now it was probably each pad was about this big and this thick and like the bottom was calloused it looked like but it was probably it was about six feet tall or seven maybe it was big but with the opuntia the fruits are really yummy and you can actually take the pads and grill them into nopales. Actually, a few of my coworkers, every time I buy a, a cactus, they always point out the fact they're like, oh, that's not like nopal, you know? You should eat it. <laughs> and my parents eat that. And then if I get really bored on the same cactus strain, I can always just take my San Pedro, which I love, so I'd be a little unfortunate, but I hear that you can make a nice tea out of them that makes um, like time go faster or something like that. That's what I heard. <laughs> I'm kidding. But, you know, we have to be resourceful with these things. Aside from not wanting to poison myself for the plants that I really wouldn't want to eat, I think I would go with my lithops. They're too cute to eat, and they're also too small to be satisfying, and as cute as they are, they look like they'd be pretty gross. So that's that. Not gonna happen. I do have to say though, a Monstera lettuce style leaf wrap, that'd be a look. Question number two. Two, you've used up all of your rubbing alcohol and pest control products and your five favorite plants have become infested. Do you and your family eat off of dirty dishes and go sober so you can use the last of your dish soap and vodka to treat your plants? First of all, I'm a savage. Da 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 da. It's not the dance. But who needs plates? Use your hands. Just pick up the food. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Use your hand. Um, 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 um. Don't eat off of a dirty dish. Use your hand before that. Wash your hands. 20 seconds. Happy birthday twice. But don't eat off of a dish. Like, this gross. But if we're talking about actually having to reuse a dirty dish, I'd just skip using the dish soap. I'd allow it to be a little less effective and I'd use the vodka. Like I said, we can always make a tea if you really need to take your mind off things. Next question. Number three, how many times have I reorganized my plants while in quarantine? So with this one, I'm actually an essential worker. So I was never actually staying at home. I have been working through this. Granted, we're closing earlier, so I guess I suppose there has been some more time. But I would say I've probably rearranged my plants five or six times, maybe one to two times a week. But I don't know if it's really quarantine related when I'm watering my plants. There's some of them that'll water in place, but a lot of them I'll actually take the nursery pot that's out of out of the cash bow bring it to the sink or the hose or whatever 
and water it there and then I bring it back kind of have to do some moving or I end up doing some moving rearranging positioning and at my job there are some plants for sale so when I've seen one that I want to buy and I bring it home you have to rearrange a little bit to find a spot for it so five or six times maybe seven or eight also, the plants that were situated right here, right next to where the camera is right now, um, actually got infested with spider mites during quarantine. So I have put them out on the lanai, or porch, or patio, or whatever you want to call it, to kind of try and isolate them. So they're all in their own little corners, but the lanai is decked out now too. So that's pretty cool. I'm constantly reorganizing my plants. Same. Number four. How many hours per day are you spending browsing plants online and have you purchased any? Hours? Certainly not hours. I browse plants just because they're cool on Instagram a lot. <laughs> but as far as like shopping, I've done some plant shopping. I bought this Zero Graphica on Amazon, hashtag Talanzio Tuesday. The Succulent Boy and I came out with a new template, so if you want to take part in the week of plants, which could be any week, Talanzi Tuesday, um, yeah, they're on Amazon. It might ship a little slower because of everything going on, but it's pretty nice and affordable. I bought these propagation vessels. My Mikan's doing pretty well, except for the spots. The, the, this is just stems, and the leaves have been coming back. And there's rainwater in here. My poor scandapsis doesn't want to do its thing. But I've also gotten, I got a Hawaiian sunshine dracaena, which you might see in a certain dance party. A friendship plant, which I think they're a type of pilea, maybe. I got a little chiflera. I got a pearls and jade pothos, and I actually bought another, I forget which type of syngonium this is, but this is the old syngonium, and then I bought a new one to try and fill up the pot a bit combine them the questions about online online maybe a little bit if I see something I might look into it but just a few minutes what I have done is two weeks in a row now I've tried to get this silly little four inch raffidophora tetrasperma from bros with Hose plant company they restock on Wednesdays at 6 and I swear it sells out in 6 2 by 602 <laughs> you have to be on it <laughs> if you want to get from them they have some good stuff though they also had a uh, Scandapsis pictus trubii, and wow, I wanted it. I think it was trubii, something like that. But yeah, mostly just light browsing. I did also get some hanging plant uh, macrame hangers that I have out in the line now. Number five. You've run out of toilet paper, and it was a doozy. Which plant do you reach for for a nice clean wipe? Don't worry, you've probably not grown any poison ivy. Reb, why do you have to go there? All right, so for this one, first of all, bidet's all the way. Y'all need to start washing your ass. Paper doesn't cut it. But if we're really talking, if I have to go there, I would go with a ficus elastica. Maybe one that's slightly underwatered because they can be a little stiff. But it has the coverage to just kind of no mess, no fuss, handle that situation. As long as you avoid the sap because that could be very bad. Very, very bad. It's a, there's a white milky sap that is an irritant if you do not know. Number six. I just want to point out that she spoke about the poop question for a long time. <laughs> Are you watching more or less planty YouTube videos? Is there a type of planty video you would like to see more of right now? I think the real type of planty video that's been the winner of quarantine has been the lives. Um, people just yearning for that social interaction while they're in quarantine. And that's probably the reason why I have been watching more. Like I said, I'm still working, so I don't have that much more time than usual. But what I have been doing is 
kind of background watching the lives. I've had to miss a lot of them because I do work in the evenings when most of the lives take place, but since we're closing earlier, depending on what I have at hand that evening, I can usually kind of put in the earphone and listen in the background. Engagement isn't all that doable, but I can stop in and say, hey guys, and then listen to the madness that ensues. Number seven. If you had to fashion a mask out of a plant, which would you use and why? All right, so I don't have one, but I have a big old head. So I think a fiddle leaf fig, like a slurata leaf, would do pretty well coverage wise. Also, I think if you took a fat Sansevieria trifasciata leaf and like put, had it horizontally, it could go pretty well around to tie it with a string. And if you layered them, you could kind of have little air holes, which kind of defeats the purpose. But I don't think suffocating with a ficus laura would be all that helpful now that I think about it. I think the Diffenbachia here might work. The Diffenbachia Tiki. Does that look like a good mask? Just realized this is called Dumbacane. <laughs> it's poisonous. And it makes it so that you can't. That's just dirt. It makes it so you can't speak. <laughs> also, I took a cutting from this plant a week ago, and where I cut it, a little bit beneath the soil actually has this, a new leaf shooting out. Cute. Dipping back, yeah. Last question. Number eight. How many days post quarantine will it be before you go plant shopping? So this one's a little different because at work, I can buy plants. So I've still done a little bit of plant shopping. <laughs> Just without people there. <laughs> um, as far as usual plant shopping, I think it really depends as we have seen. There are some people who aren't taking the whole situation at hand seriously as they should. So that is a factor to take into account. We don't have any big plant shops in my direct area that have like a pickup system in place where it'd be safe. Um, there is one that's small enough where there's one, very rarely two, employees at a time and I've seen maybe one other customer there while I've been there in the past and they're still closed but when they reopen I think I'd probably go there but it's just a matter of taking precautions. Thank you Reb for a funny plant tag. Since this is pretty late I'm not going to actually tag anybody but if you see this and you want to participate feel free. I'd love to see your video. Tag me and tag Reb. Let us see what you did. But yeah, with this stuff hopefully wrapping up as soon as possible, it's really not sure when it's gonna end. Uh, everyone be sure to stay safe, socially distance as most, much as possible, maintain your personal bu bubble, wash your hands. When you go out in public, there's no standing directly next to a random stranger it isn't gonna add anything to your life. Go ahead and back up. Some people aren't getting that, <laughs> which I see personally at work. But as long as you're taking precautions, we can all get through this. Everyone have a wonderful day. Um, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to take part in the succulent boy and I's week full of plants with a day in the leaf. Like a day in the life, get it? Uh, uh. We'll hop over to either of our Instagram pages and you can catch the template. Basically, you post about a different family of plants every day and then you can put them all together and Santa Varia sun Succulent Sunday. Monstera Monday, Talansia Tuesday, Wax Plant Wednesday, Thorny Thursday. Let me get this cactus in there. I guess you could do Thirsty Thursday if you want to do Calathea or something. But ours is Thorny Thursday, um, Ficus Friday, and Sense of Area Saturday. We'd love to have you participate. All right, thanks, guys. Well, yeah.